Episode seven of Ahsoka is finally out and does this set up the finale of season one to a good extent? Well, we're gonna talk about it. As per usual, I'm gonna break down this episode and then give my thoughts because I really think there's a lot to say about this episode. Even though I'm hearing kind of mixed reactions on it, I really did enjoy it and I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> Guys, join us on the road to 1,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button on the way out. It means so much, and thank you for watching this video. But with all that stuff out of the way, let's get into Ahsoka episode seven. Funny enough, this episode actually starts out on Coruscant. We meet up with Mon Mothma, who is talking to Hera in the Senate chamber about her actions. Hera is basically getting criticized for her actions, and we kind of see how the New Republic, especially one of the senators, is really attacking her and wants to dethrone her from her position of power. But who comes to the rescue? None other than C. C-3PO on behalf of Princess Leia. This was a great little fan servicey moment. I love Anthony Daniels and it's so nice seeing him returning as C-3PO and it's nice that Princess Leia, even though she's on the good side and leading the good side now, she's still bailing out our rebels. After this, Mon Mothma asks Hera, how real is the threat of Grand Admiral Thrawn? And well, it is a pretty great one. Episode seven is titled Dreams and Madness and after the title card, we open up with Ahsoka and Hu Yang inside of the Pergil. Only this time, Ahsoka is training with her lightsabers and we get another cameo from the Chosen One, Anakin Skywalker. This was such a great little surprise and it actually shows Ahsoka coming to terms with and sort of bearing the hatchet with her old master. This was the last training tape that Anakin left Ahsoka and we hear the dialogue that we didn't hear from the other scenes with Anakin in the previous episodes that we noticed in the trailers. And honestly, my favorite part about this is Anakin name drops Asajj, Ventress, and General Grievous. He also mentions Count Dooku, so this recording was actually the very last one he made for her during the Clone Wars. It was such a great little Easter egg slash fun little moment. I'm so glad Hayden got to appear in another episode. It's so good seeing Ahsoka come to terms with her master and realizing it's not her fault because he was a great master. It's not her fault that he turned to Darth Vader. And now we finally see her accepting that. They come out of hyperspace and the Pergils are actually being attacked. Ahsoka and Huyang leave the Pergil and find a minefield laid out by Grand Admiral Thrawn on to stop them from arriving on Peridia. This was such an amazing sequence. It reminded me a lot of Empire Strikes Back. They're navigating the asteroids in that movie and here they're navigating these mines and it was just very Star Wars. Again, this series has done a great job of returning Star Wars to its original style while developing new concepts, new characters, and new stories. They make it through the minefield, but end up having to go into the ring of this planet, which is completely covered in bones of Pergil and hide there. Again, calling back to Empire Strikes Back when the Millennium Falcon actually had to hide from the Imperial Star Destroyer. Back on the Chimera, Thrawn learns about Ahsoka's heritage. He learns that Anakin Skywalker was her master and the look on his face is just priceless. He realizes that he may have underestimated Ahsoka Tano and even though it's only one ship coming to attack, it may be too much for them to handle. But of course, Thrawn being Thrawn, he has a plan for this. We get some great hologram moments with Enoch and I just love the whole vibe and aesthetic of this place. And this episode did a great job of taking Thrawn, who we know from Rebels, and introducing him to a new audience. People who haven't seen Thrawn before don't necessarily know how methodical and how tactical he is. This episode does a great job of presenting that. He speaks the line, we will always be one step ahead. And if you've watched Rebels, you know Thrawn is always one, if not more, steps ahead. We catch up with Sabine and Ezra, and actually something very funny happens. Ezra talks about things that have happened since he's been gone. And when Ezra asks if the Emperor is dead, Sabine says, I'm pretty sure I think so. Which honestly is a very funny nod to the fact that yes, Palpatine does somehow return. But I just thought that was really funny, and it was great seeing these two characters connect again. Thrawn uses the Night Mothers to triangulate Ahsoka's position in in the ring of this planet. The Night Mothers are just so creepy. I love their character design. I hope to see more of them. And with the mention of Asajj Ventress, I would love to see her again in live action. We know her fate in the book, but we don't really know it in live action because we know Dave Filoni sort of only counts the movies as canon, even though her story definitely goes a certain way in the books. Now, at the same time, Ahsoka is attempting to find Sabine and she actually reaches out into the force like Luke did to Leia in Empire Strikes Back and like many other Jedi have done in the past. Only 
And this time, Sabine actually hears her. Sabine calls back and doesn't really know what's going on. She finds this comforting feeling inside of her. And this is definitely something I think we might have heard before with the Jedi speaking through the Force. I don't know. I feel like I've heard the Force being described as a comfortable feeling. And now with this, Ahsoka knows the location of Sabine and so does Thrawn. Now Thrawn only sends one transport of troops to Ahsoka. And why is he doing this? We'll find out later. But remember, we also have Balin and Shin who are supposedly going to attack them. Speaking of them, we catch up with Balin and Shin and something very different than what I thought was going to happen actually happens. Balin sort of says goodbye to Shin, tells Shin to take over her new empire that she's going to form with Thrawn and Morgan Elsbeth. Balin has a completely different plan than her and he wants her to go forward and fulfill her destiny because he sees them splitting off and going into different directions. Shin doesn't really know how to feel about this. She kind of feels like she's just been left to go on her own without any more guidance. And Balin leaves her with a very, very important quote. Balin says to her, impatience for victory will guarantee defeat. Of course, this is symbolic of what Balin's whole journey has been. He has waited so long to carry out this plan that we still don't have details of right before the season finale. And he tells Shin, be patient because your time will come. Again, we still have no idea what Balin's plan is, but now he's sort of leaving Shin on her own. And I don't think she really wants to be left alone. Balin and the nomads attack Sabine and Ezra and end up cornering them in their own little ships. Meanwhile, Ahsoka has arrived and she does this little jump out of her ship that, uh, let me just tell you, the CGI has been amazing throughout this entire show, but this shot was just not it. But the show has been amazing so far. That's the one problem I have with it. I'll take it. She arrives on the scene and ends up dueling Balin. Meanwhile, Sabine and Ezra have to fight Shin. And of course, also there are tons of nomads around that they have to take care of. And at the same time, they have to protect the Nodi. Now Sabine tries to give Ezra his lightsaber back, but he says, look, I don't need it. Use it to protect yourself. And I know some people may have some issues with this, but look, I see this as Ezra being more powerful than Sabine at this moment in time having the force and letting Sabine use his lightsaber still because, well, he, like he says, he doesn't need it. And we get this shown to us. Sabine uses her blaster in the lightsaber while Ezra just goes to town with the force. I have to say, Iman's performance as Ezra is a standout. He is just the same as he was in Rebels. Very quippy in combat and very lighthearted, even though they're in this very dangerous situation. Now, Hu Yang swoops in on the T6 and separates Balin and Ahsoka from their fight so she can catch up with Sabine and Ezra. When we briefly catch up with Thrawn and Morgan Elsbeth, Thrawn is kind of confused. He has no idea what Balin is doing. Why isn't Balin there obeying orders? He had reservations about him in the beginning and they were correct. He cannot completely trust Balin and Balin definitely doesn't trust him. He has his own agenda. And because of this, when Ahsoka arrives with Sabine and Ezra, Shin is by herself. Ahsoka reaches a hand out to her saying, I can help you. And well, she almost accepts it, but she runs away. I sense a very good character arc coming with this character, turning from this sort of foundling Sith character to a redeemed Jedi, maybe a completely nomadic Jedi. But then again, we only have one episode left and I really hope they do a season two. Now, while this wasn't a complete victory for Thrawn, he points out that this could be noted as a victory because, well, he got what he wanted. This whole time, this whole plan, he wasn't trying to directly attack Sabine and Ezra. In fact, he was trying to get everybody but himself away from the point where he's going to be leaving this planet. It was genius. This is who Thrawn is. He's methodical. He thinks about everything multiple steps ahead, and, well, he succeeds here. He gets Balin and Shin, Ezra and Sabine, and Ahsoka Tano out out of the way so he can load up his entire Chimera Star Destroyer and get out of there and leave them stranded. Now, while he doesn't leave in this episode, he is very successful in the fact that he got everything on board while everybody else was doing their own thing. Again, this is a great introduction for people who don't know Thrawn from Rebels. If you haven't seen Rebels before, again, go watch it. It's incredible and let me know what you think about it. And surprisingly, this episode ends with a very happy note. We get the reunion of Ahsoka and Ezra with Sabine and it's just wonderful. It reminded me a lot of an episode of Star Wars Rebels, where they're sort of self-contained stories and action sequences that have a happy ending, but they leave the door open technically for more things. This felt the most Rebels slash episodic out of all of the show's episodes so far. And while I don't think it was the best setup for a finale, because, well, what do we have to expect at this point? I do think it was a very good episode, but maybe not to the caliber as the last two. I know this episode is going to stick the landing. I have so much faith in it. They have a lot to tie up, which I am a little bit worried about, especially with these 30 five to 40 minute run times. But guys, this show has been a slam dunk home run so far. 
Down in the comments section, let me know what you thought about this episode. I really enjoyed it. I definitely can see why people may not have liked it as much as the other ones. But again, overall, it's just nitpicks. What more could you want? You have the dialogue moments, you got the fan service moments, you have the action, you have the force, you have the character development. Sure, the plot didn't move along so much this episode, but the finale, I'm sure, is gonna bring it home. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave a like on the way out. It would mean so much to me, and hit that subscribe button to join us on the road to 1,000 subs. Be on the lookout for more Ahsoka videos soon because I'm gonna make plenty regarding this episode. So yeah, with that out of the way, I will see you all very soon.